Hi everyone, it's Julie Shigatomi and I'm back with Utila Geography 201 on Utila's South Shore and the Western Shore as well. As you remember from the first video, I am on the island of Utila. It's the smallest of the three bay islands located on the northern coast of Honduras in Central America. The three bay islands are Utila, Roatan and Guanaja and we're going to focus on Utila of course and here's some landmarks. We've got Pumpkin Hill which is our highest point. There's our airport, we've got a couple of harbors, Rock Harbor, Turtle Harbor and Turtle Harbor Pond, and Carey's Bay. We also have the Utila Keys, but that will be coming up in another video. Focusing on the south and western shores and access to the South Shore Road, here's the channel that separates the road accessible areas from the boat access areas. There's another channel to Utila's upper lagoon, however it is spanned over by a bridge and that allows the eastern side of the island to be accessible by road. The lower lagoon channel does not have a bridge and therefore you're going to need a boat to cross over there and get to the inland waterways if you want to access the various marinas and we'll talk more about that later. But in the meantime, let's start with the tour at Pine Point on the western shore. We're looking lengthwise east towards the town and turning south to look over to the Keys and the mainland mountains there in the background. There are gorgeous white sandy beaches on the western shore at Pine Point, and it's probably because they are protected from the easterly trade winds that we get. The shoreline here is perfect for building a dock. You might think that the life of a Caribbean realtor is all about turquoise blue waters and white sandy beaches. Well, it is, but there's also some stress involved when you're trying to capture all these images on your drone and you second guess the intelligent capabilities of it and you almost crash it into the ocean. To take this drone footage, I'm using a DJI Phantom 4, and it's so intelligent that when the battery starts dying, it will ascend to a preset altitude, hover over the original takeoff site, and immediately descend. I stupidly second-guessed the drone's capability of landing in the wind, and I'm afraid it's going to fall off the dock, which is pretty much what I almost made it do. You can see the horror in my face as I realize what's happening. You can also probably see me curse. And I realize that the drone is about to go into the water. Thankfully, it teeters on the edge, and I don't know how because I have the slowest reflexes ever, but I came running up under the drone, grabbed it. You can see my phone almost fell off the holder, and I don't know how I didn't get chopped to pieces by the rotating blades, but all turned out pretty well, and I could still make this video. So sometimes Caribbean life can be stressful, especially since this wasn't my drone because I crashed mine when the battery fell out in Cayos Cochinos. But then there's other wonderful things like filming this after I just completed a property survey. The next area I come to is Gibson's Bay, which is a lot wetter than it appears in Google Earth, as you can see from the drone footage. And we head over to Holland Beach, it's your quintessential white sandy shores with your palm trees, but keep in mind that any property can be manicured to look the same way. It just takes a little bit of watering, planting, and a lot of love. You can see the Elia Canal there, and that's what separates the areas we just talked about from Utila's South Shore Road as well as the power grid. The next area we come to is Solomon's, also known as David Beach, and it has a very similar shoreline as Pine Point and the rest of the areas we just talked about. There aren't many places on Utila where you can just drive your boat onto the shore. 
it's also a pretty good area for a dock. What's nice about this area is its proximity to the Attila Keys and you can get supplies over there in the Fisherman's Village and the area is probably the most densely populated area outside of Utila's town. The next area we come to is Jonathan's Point, also known as The Well, and you'll see a lot more houses in this area, probably because it's right across from the Keys. This is a great location on the island. You have access to the Keys, you have the South Shore Road. Power is served to this area as well as to the Keys, and you've got some sandy shores and sheltered areas where you can have a dock. Next up is an area called Mariner's Landing, also known as Richard's Point. This beachside community has HOAs, homeowner association fees, that pay for the upkeep and maintenance of the two communal docks, a groundskeeper who cleans the beach, and there's underground power to every lot. One of Utila's best dive sites is right out front here called Stingray Point. You can see the coral right under the surface of the water. Big Rock is the next area, home to Utopia Dive Village, an upscale dive resort. Last week we saw dolphins on the way to view property. I don't think many realtors can say that. Going east towards town, we get to Jack Neal Beach. You can see the incredible fringing reef around this area. We're actually just leaving Big Rock and heading into the Jack Neal area. There are places to build docks in this area, but you've just got to be sure you're not going to be building it on top of the coral reef, of course. We're just heading into the Jack Neal Beach area just after these rocks, and it's an area with HOAs as well. That pays for the beach cleaning, as you can probably see, and the maintenance of the communal dock right there. Next up is Little Bite, and you can see the marinas in the background there. Sorry, I'm a little bit confusing here because I'm going back toward the west end from Little Bite towards Jack Neal, which is there right around the corner. And I apologize for my bad drone driving. I am Asian after all. And the last area before we get back to town is called Silver Garden. You can see the channel there, which enters the lower lagoon system, separating town from boat access properties. And now we're going to talk about the inland waterway system. From the channel, you can access the back of Chepe's Public Beach. You can go to the Palms and on the west side, you can get to Coconut Grove Marina and to the South Shore Marina. And this comprises the inland waterway system. So now that you know where the inland waterways are and the marinas, you can see how to connect to the South Shore Road, which is shown here in yellow. People refer to it as a road, but it's actually a utility easement created when the power company was running the electricity down to the Utila Keys. Maybe one day they'll extend the road and the power grid to the Elia Canal. The municipal water service has been piped down to the Utila Keys a few years ago. However, it is currently not accessible by the homes on the South Shore. This is actually a pretty common occurrence in Utila where Rainwater catchment, large cisterns, and wells are the main source of water for most of the homes, besides those located right in town. And lastly, lastly, beyond the Elia Canal, those areas are completely off grid and don't have access to the road because the road stops here, as does the electrical grid at Jonathan Point. And that wraps up the Utila Geography 201 video on the Utila South and West Shores. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for my next video on the Utila Keys.
In the meantime, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at realestateinutila at gmail.com. I've done my best to depict everything in this video accurately. I apologize in advance if I've made any errors and I hope you find it useful. These videos are created to help answer the questions that people ask me all the time. If you want more information, you can visit my website at www.realestateinutila.com. Thanks for watching.